Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Thursday, January 5th, 2017 edition of VR News. Lots to talk about, but we're going to start with last night. I want to apologize for that show. I had gone to bed at a fairly reasonable time, being my first day at work today, and uh, end result, when I went to hit the sack, it was on the processing stage, which is after it's already uploaded, thought nothing of it, was in a rush in the morning, even though I was kind of there, I should check, I should check, didn't get to check till lunchtime, long story short, again, apologies, I submitted as soon as I could, which was after lunch. That's why I'm trying to get this out to you guys to make up for that one yesterday on time. That's my goal. So here we go. All right. We're going to start with Arizona Sunshine, a game which a lot of us have enjoyed uh, on the Rift or on the Vive. It's available for both platforms. Now, they are announcing... And I don't know if it's coincidental because of the Vegas CES 2017, but they've just announced a Las Vegas themed game mode, which they're calling Undead Valley. That will be released for both Rift and Vive versions of the game in February. No word yet on if it's paid DLC or free content or extra, just what it's called, the theme and when. So hopefully we find out as we get closer to February. Now let's get into CES and some of the juicies there. This one from VentureBeat.com. Pico Technology has unveiled their untethered HMD. Now, Pico is a Chinese company, and this is an all-in-one, fully untethered, lightweight headset. That's what they're billing it. We had quite the discussion going. I believe the viewer's name is Paul. Uh, about inside out versus outside in tracking and again by the definition of the industry rift vive outside in this inside out because everything you need to do tracking is within self-contained within the hmd even though i totally get that logically you could kind of argue the definition the other way as well but whatever that's what they call it and this pico thing just to give you an idea here of what it's capable of it uses an 820 snapdragon processor so while it is untethered before we get too too excited this is more in line with gear vr than of course it would be with rift vive or even playstation vr uh, it's a far cry from that kind of quality of gpu but still not bad and whether it's mobile or not there's some pretty damn good mobile games on gear vr uh, to have that kind of quality content on an untethered solution with full positional tracking that the Gear VR does not have would be awesome. Now, two displays, 1.5K, so that's roughly 1500 by, or 1536 by 1100 per, there's two, as well as running at 90 hertz. Also includes built-in hi-fi speakers and a spatial rendering engine. So very, very cool. They also announced that they've got a more enterprise business version of it called the Pico Neo DK. Uh, no word yet on final price or specifically when just that they hope to launch the headset within the year 2017. Now we've got a couple of stories, guys, uh, in a row here dealing with HTC. First one. HTC announces at CES their Vive Tracker. Now, this thing comes with the simple ingredient of Velcro and literally allows for devs and, by extension, eventually us, to attach a, uh, the HTC Vive Tracker device to pretty much any real-world object. Now, the video at the link that I'm providing shows them connecting it to sports peripherals hockey sticks, tennis rackets. Imagine you could attach it to guns. Pretty much anything you could think of with some additional programming, of course. Uh, and yeah, you could make that object trackable. So very cool. No word on price. Uh, Daniel O'Brien, who's general manager for Vive, stated that they hope to ship this commercially beginning with the second quarter of this year. And as they get closer to that date, they should have an idea on price. But take a look. 
pretty cool. It's definitely got that HTC vibe to the design. So staying with HTC in this next story, and also featuring Daniel O'Brien, they announced their new deluxe head strap. And look, they've made no secret of the fact that they don't feel they're in a competition with Oculus, that there's plenty of room for both of them. If you look at Valve's side of the equation, considering you know how PlayStation and, and currently Oculus operates their software, you could probably argue that HTC and Valve are the most open of the bunch. Still not our true definition of it, but probably closer than the other two. Now, with that said, what they're going to be able to do with this device is basically copy the Rift completely. And to me, that's just further evidence that they truly mean what they say. They're not beyond saying, you know what, that's a pretty cool feature. Yeah, we're going to share that because that's exactly what it looks like. I've got a few pictures up here yet. That's probably going to be the first time I remove the headphones from my HTC Vive that one of the viewers kindly made for me, paid for it, but uh, he created it. And I believe there's a few others of you who purchased one off him, but they basically laid over top of your ears. Unlike the Rift and these ones from this new deluxe strap, which clip into place, yeah, that was the one thing missing. Sound-wise, I was happy with that. It was about on par, but this will probably one be one that actually replaces that. But uh, definitely a stylish design and very familiar. Their press kit says interior padding, a new three-in-one cable path, and an easy-to-adjust sizing dial. Now, Daniel O'Brien was asked why they didn't launch with this, if this is something they had in the works for a while, and his reply to that, they just simply weren't ready. They didn't want to release something half-assed when it wasn't, in fact, ready, thus the wait for, you know, the announcement at CES 2017. Either way, I think that's... Uh, pretty obvious once you see it, the design, but the fact that they've confirmed it and have an option for that now, awesome. All right, it has been a long time since I've been excited about an AMD processor. For me personally, even though I had some FX processors, the last one I was truly excited about as an enthusiast would have been the Athlon 64, just to kind of date how long it's been for me. I loved my Athlon 64. It was a beast. It was very overclockable. Uh, back then, there were still a quite a few games that benefited from CPUs and fast CPUs. Unlike now, where it's just a handful of games, most are GPU limited and require the faster GPU, not so much the CPU side of things. Unless, of course, you get into SLI and Crossfire, where yeah, then those definitely will help. Now, with this new chip, which they're calling Ryzen, R-Y-Z-E-N, they haven't officially leaked anything or mentioned or stated anything in any kind of a press release, but, and this is uh, via extremetech.com, which is a, a website that I like to visit, along with Tom's Hardware and Antech and a bunch of other ones, there was a leaked version of a prefab version that some testers got their hands on. And I believe it was from a French magazine. I've included the picture here, plus a translation I'll read a little bit from, where they were very impressed with the performance. They were able to do basically number crunching with it, but also game testing. On the game testing side of things, they said it was within about 3% of the core i5 6500K and asked people to keep in mind that, look, they have a very underclocked version at 3.3. The retail version is probably going to be clocked between 3.5, likely closer to 4. So uh, definitely still some room there. And what they said with the number crunching is that it was getting dangerously close to Intel uh, specifically the i7-6900K, by offering 
performance comparable to the Core i7-5960X. So either way, very cool uh, and literally very cool in that it runs on basically 93 watt power consumption. So this thing, if it can live up to those leaked benchmarks, if in fact they were real benchmarks and really leaked, not bad. And welcome back to the discussion for AMD. Very, very cool. Super excited about that. Now, do you think the dust has settled on the whole VR 360 degree camera craze? If you guessed after the last few days, no, you'd definitely be correct because this one takes the cake. Meet China's Insta360. It's an 8K, you heard me right, 8K 360 degree camera. No word on if it can handle that streaming. But uh, it's a Chinese company called Insta360, their camera, the Insta360 Pro. As they say, 8K resolution designed for shooting 360 degree films to be displayed in VR headsets. The standalone camera can capture images and videos, is also suitable for live streaming, uses six independent high definition lenses, captures 60 megapixel, 360 degree stills, 3D stills, and supports both HDR and RAW formats. 4K, it can record at 100 frames per second. And all that for 3,000 US, which on its own sounds like a lot, but take what I said about the Nokia Ozo the other day and apply it to this device. And there's even a stronger argument for wondering what Nokia's response is going to be. And I would love, because I'm not, you know, much of a video file, meaning I appreciate the graphics, just not an enthusiast to do all the benchmarking and testing as crazy as some people. But I would love to see a response from Nokia, because spec-wise, they're getting to that point where you'd think they're being, they're sitting pretty uncomfortable, let's just put it that way. I would love to see the differentiator. If indeed they feel there still is one, market that. Market that advantage. Otherwise, you make a very tough case for anyone to drop, you know, 42,000 more dollars to get the Ozo when you could get this unit for 3,000. Now, there's other factors, there's quality, we would need more testing. I just want to hear a response. I want to be sold on what makes that higher end unit that much better. All right. The last story also from CES. One of the reviewers, authors from Upload VR is one of the only people in the world and I think probably one of the only journalists so far able to test Intel's project Alloy, which is also an inside out tracking capable system. This one kind of more mixed reality. And author's name is Ian Hamilton. Like I said, he got to try this out, but he wanted to qualify in the article and I'm qualifying here on his behalf that some of the negativity or, you know, performance issues that he experienced may have been due to the fact that it's not ready for prime time yet unit that he tried and that everything was kind of done last minute. The scanning of the room wasn't done in real time, for example. It was done beforehand. So with that said, let's get to his words. So he says, I don't recall a physical object in the middle of the room in the Santa Cruz demo, so there's no point of comparison uh, for that. But in the Project Alloy demo, the object's location drifted considerably as I moved around the room. What this means is that the relative location of the table and its virtual counterpart drifted apart. The result, I bumped into the table, but when I reached down to touch it with my hands at the spot where my senses were telling me the table should be, it was actually about a foot away, so 30 centimeters further away. And that's kind of, you know, desyncing, just walking around a fairly small room for not a lot of time. So hopefully they get that drift addressed. Possibly it already is, but that was the experience that he had. Likewise, the controller 
that he was using had limited tracking. It didn't have the ability, for example, to target ammo drops. He had to literally walk up to them and do conventional grabs because the functionality on the gamepad, as far as he understood, just didn't exist. So either way, the device looks good, but uh, his final kind of clinching statement for me, and that's where I would want to see more to be convinced that it's a worthwhile device, is the marketing video that they've created with the guy entering the party. He says, had that been him, he probably would have walked into a wall, meaning it was nowhere, nowhere near as accurate or as good looking as that video showed. But hey, that's marketing. So, all right, guys, that is it for the news. Hopefully this is getting to you guys on time tonight, unlike yesterday. Uh, appreciate all of you. Cheers, guys, and definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.